Hey everybody, welcome to Travel Faith Feely. I'm at Warburg Castle again because I climb mountains to take you to sacred places. Uh, this is the place where Martin Luther was kidnapped by his friends, stolen away, and uh, pretended to be a knight named George. And uh, good thing for us Lutherans that he was taken here because this is the place where he then translated the Bible into German. So this is the room where Luther took to the task of translating the Bible from German and Hebrew. And so it's kind of a lovely thing that he had this retreat time away, although he was afraid for his life the entire time he was here. Uh, but an interesting thing is that I think when you translate the Bible from a place of knowing how religion can go wrong, um, particularly when it's used to hurt people rather than to bring good news to them, you translate it in a way that is truly good news for those in the future. And so while it was definitely probably a terrifying time for Luther, it uh, helps to remind us and, and perhaps adds to this idea of grace being overwhelming of God's love being non-negotiable and the idea that people really do need access to the text themselves so that it takes away the power of those who have made up stories about who's in and who's out. And so this tiny little room is where a guy had the courage to put the Bible in contemporary language. Think about how many fights today in Christianity still are about that very task, putting sacred words in contemporary language. So we did something called Bible study that doesn't suck and that's up for interpretation whether or not it sucks, but some people wonder why we're not giving you the same old translation that's always been given for everything. Uh, and that's because of the power of this place, right? Martin Luther says that the Bible can be translated into a language that's understandable to the people and that that gives them power. And that means that we can continue to do that today. We don't have to just translate Luther's version of the Bible from German into English. We can translate it into words that are continuously good news for the people today. And that means we're always gonna need to keep retranslating the Bible. And at its best, that's what sermons are. Translating good news into good news for people who need to hear it. Nothing else, that's all it is. And so my hope is the Bible study that doesn't suck is good news. If it's not, you got some translating to do. So thanks for joining me here at Warburg Castle. It's a little bit windy, so whew, if it gets you. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out about Luther's translating of the Bible is that he had to make up a lot of words because they didn't exist yet um, in his translations from the Greek and the Hebrew. And so you might have to make up some words too, particularly to translate to people who are like you and people who speak your language. And so I encourage you to be a part of that tradition of not only finding contemporary ways for God to speak for you and to you, good news, but if you have to invent the language to do it, get started.